Welcome back to the channel. This video is in Meteorology and Atmospheric Science and today we're looking at the Azores or Azores High and Bermuda High and this amazing atmospheric phenomena we're going to discuss in detail and how it relates to wind direction, pressure and weather patterns in and around the North Atlantic Basin. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Our atmosphere is this thin gaseous layer which is both complex and dynamic in nature. And gas and how it moves and the fluid dynamics that it creates around the whole planet based on differences in temperature and pressure and how this creates amazing weather patterns and prevailing winds and pressure belts and all this different dynamic processes and mechanisms that occur across the whole planet is just amazing and how we can look at certain areas of the planet that have more consistent weather and consistent atmospheric pressure and characteristics because of certain mechanisms that are at play and this video is looking at one in particular which is the Azores or the Azores High that also reaches over to Bermuda in the Atlantic Ocean and has far-reaching effects for both weather and climate and wind all across North America, Africa and Europe. And this is the area outlined in this area, this rectangle shown in the diagram, reaching between North America, Europe, Africa and concentrating on the North Atlantic Basin. If we focus in, we put in the lines of latitude, the parallels, we're looking at the ITCZ, which stands for the Intertropical Convergence Zone, which is where you have the easterlies around the tropics converging on the equator, which is zero degrees latitude. And you have the 30 degrees north latitude line or parallel put into the diagram and also the 23 and a half degree Tropic of Cancer parallel, which indicates the starting point of the tropics, which also indicates the extent of the maximum amount of thermal energy concentrated from solar radiation around the planet, which is the equator and the tropics. And it gets progressively colder as you go further north and higher in latitude in the northern hemisphere. And again, southern hemisphere is the same, but our focus is on the North Atlantic Basin. And this is going to include both the Hadley convective cell and the feral convective cell. Now the Hadley cell goes from on both sides, it's symmetrical, goes from the equator to around 30 degrees north and the feral cell roughly starts around 30 degrees north and goes up to 60 degrees north of the equator and we call that the mid latitudes. And for those of you who love different diagrams and different perspectives, different viewpoints like I do, this here is a diagram of the whole planet, both northern and southern hemispheres, and you have the three symmetrical convective zones or cells, which are the Hadley, either side of the equator, the feral cell in the middle latitudes between 30 and 60 degrees north and south, and you have the polar cell, which again over the polar regions between 60 and 90 degrees north and south. Again, we're going to focus on the north or northern hemisphere and look at the mid-Atlantic basin, which is associated with both the Hadley and the feral cell. And if you look at the blue arrows that are descending air from the upper troposphere between 8 to 15 kilometers above the surface, the pores, and this air is descending down towards the surface and then move in north and south to connect up the Hadley and Feral cells, this is our focus point over roughly 30 degrees north, which produces this lovely high pressure or high atmospheric pressure at the surface. So the low pressure zone over the ITCC or the equator is where you have the easterlies over the tropics moving air molecules or the prevailing winds moving from the east and they are converging on the equator on the zero degrees latitude plus the thermal energy creating this convective area of rising air above the equator and creating low pressure belt around this part of the world. And when you add in the feral cell, you have the addition of the westerlies, the prevailing winds moving from the west. 
and how the westerlies and easterlies combine around the 30 degrees north latitude parallel which is called the horse latitudes where you have this descending air this high pressure belt which is in a general circulation model which is what this is is going around this whole parallel of 30 degrees north in reality is a little bit different as we see coming up with the Azores or the Azores and Bermuda High. So the locations of both Bermuda and the Azores or the Azores is 32 degrees north and 37 degrees north respectively. So these locations are near about the high pressure belt that is created around the horse latitudes or 30 degrees north as explained with the competitive cells of the Farrell and Hadley and also of the prevailing winds both the westerlies and the easterlies which is creating this movement of air away from the descending area around 30 degrees north and both Bermuda and the Azores or Azores are right smack in this area of descending air from the upper troposphere and producing these westerlies and easterlies and they curve because of the Coriolis effect and the rotation of the earth and deflection of the wind as it moves north and south because of a spinning planet. So as the diagram for the GCMs show that was a very generalized model of how the air and heat is going to circulate through the atmosphere and create and move through these three cells, the Hadley, Ferrell and Polar. However, in reality, this is a very dynamic and fluid atmospheric system, especially in the troposphere and going up through different pressure areas up to the upper troposphere. It's going to be this modified move-in system that we can look at based on season, the time of the year, the tilt, and also the amount of temperature and thermal energy coming out of the equator versus the feral cell's intensity and the high pressure that is going to be around that 30 degree parallel is going to mutate and move between the Azores and Bermuda based on the season. And it creates this kind of semi-permanent anti-cyclonic system around this northern Atlantic region between both Bermuda and the Azores and the impact of this ridge of high pressure and the pressure gradient is going to create a pattern of winds around it and affect both Europe, Northern Africa and North America and also the Caribbean or Caribbean. And of course, I'm a visual learner and love these diagrams. Here is a side view or profile of what a high pressure anticyclone looks like where the air descending from the upper troposphere and you have the surface being that mediator, that blocker and the air descending down on a location creating higher pressure, which is generally above 1,013 millibars, which is the average. Anything higher like 1,050, 1,040 will be classified as higher pressure and it's going to move the wind or move the air molecules either side, north and south, away from this high pressure and create this ridge at the surface of higher pressure and flowing air with a pressure gradient and surface winds moving away from this area creating both the westerlies and the easterlies at around this 30 degree north latitude parallel. This also happens around the poles but in terms of the high pressure ridge we're looking at for this video this is the focus in terms of latitude which is around 30 degrees north. The end result is this semi-permanent subtropical ridge of high pressure that fluctuates and moves between the Azores or Azores Islands and Bermuda. Now the Azores have it during the winter and the spring and affects both European weather patterns and wind patterns and climate and African weather and climate and then during the summer it's going to move and migrate further west across the Atlantic Ocean Basin towards Bermuda and again this coincides with the North Atlantic hurricane season whereby the winds and the ridge are going to be this kind of like large blocking area whereby the hurricanes are kind of brought or channeled around the outside of this high pressure and knowing where it is can better allow meteorologists and forecasting models 
to predict the intensity or the path or the course of this tropical depression, tropical cyclone, and various stage or size hurricanes, and hopefully allow people in its path to be notified way in advance and to make the correct precautions and preparations and maybe evacuation. So this high pressure ridge is very important in the North Atlantic Basin, not only for the climate and weather and wind patterns that it's going to produce based on where it is in each time of year and the strength of it, and also the movement and pathway it creates for various levels of hurricanes from basic disturbance and waves and easterly waves to full-blown depressions and then named hurricanes. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.